Over 3,600 cases of sexual and gender-based violence in 2020 alone. And these are just the ones reported. So many of these cases still go unreported. And as of today, some states have still not domesticated the Violence Against Persons Act for God knows what reason. My guest on the program gives us some insight as to why these states are still hesitant to enforce what many have called a brilliant piece of legislation. This year's 16 Days of Activism to Fight Sexual and Gender-Based Violence focuses on the need for special courts to try these cases. And my guest walks us through the ongoing negotiations to ensure this is done soon. Our focus on the FCT takes a look at the referral center set up in the nation's capital to handle sexual and gender-based violence cases. And as we do every week, we give you our Abuja wrap. This is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I'm Kayla Magua. We begin with a rundown of major stories making the news from Abuja's seat of power. Effectively, President Muhammad Buhari has promised to severely punish all ghost workers, those who have engaged in illegal recruitment, as well as those who pad their personal payrolls as a way to address the critical challenge of the high cost of governance. He gave the warning at a third national summit on diminishing corruption in the public sector organized by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC. Those who illegally bring in personnel into the public workforce by illegal recruitment, those who paid their personnel payroll, those who retain ghost workers must be and will be severely punished. The president is calling for stronger emphasis on people-to-people -people relations between South Africa and Nigeria to foster a bond that will mutually benefit both countries as well as Africa. The president made the call when he received the president of South Africa, Sir Ramaphosa, at the State House. We have been able to hold successful meetings while observing strict coronavirus protocols through fraternal cooperation and understanding. Today, has witnessed the signing of a new memoranda of understanding between Nigeria and South Africa in diverse areas, including youth development, women and child empowerment, and political consultations, critical areas that will lead to increased people-to-people -people contact. The president also visited the United Arab Emirates where he attended the Nigerian Day at the ongoing Dubai Expo. He traveled with some members of his cabinet and the National Security Advisor. Speaking at the ceremony, President Buhari called on countries, businesses and individuals to work together to overcome challenges and make the world a better place. And the president joined the rest of the world to mark the 2021 International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women and Girls. He received the Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallon, in the State House. Dame Tallon also met with the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimajo, as part of a commemoration of the day. The wife of the president, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, is re echoing the need for the adoption of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act by states who are yet to implement the policy. She made the call at an event organized by the Nigerian Governor's Wives Forum to mark the 16 days of activism against sexual and gender-based violence. Justice delayed is justice denied. Remove all obstacles faced by the girl child in getting opportunities such as decent education, resources and health care. Ensure that there is adequate funding and budgetary for gender-based violence interventions. We all have a role to play in addressing this menace. Professor Yemi Oshimbajo is commending the Nigerian Exchange Limited for using technology to attract young retail investors, especially in Nigeria's thriving financial technology space. He made the commendation at the maiden edition of the Nigerian Exchange Limited Capital Markets Conference. The second drive is that technology drive, which I understand is being driven by the NGS Technology Board, is attracting the tech companies, the present and future tech unicorns to the market as a viable option for, for raising capital. We must work gingerly to ensure that where policy may be involved, we enhance and not encumber the ability of these companies to raise capital quickly and efficiently. 
The National Economic Council has endorsed a memo on the finance bill for 2022. The endorsement came after a virtual meeting of the council chaired by the Vice President, Professor Yemiya Shimajo. Highlights of the bill were presented to the council by the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zaina Bachmid. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has been speaking about some of his decisions while in office, delivering the graduation lecture at the Executive Intelligent Management Course 14 at the National Institute for Security Studies in Abuja. Dr. Jonathan explains that he had no idea that governors of states where he built the Amajiri schools were unhappy with him. When I was in office, after stepping at the time to even attempt to build some schools, they now call them uh, Amajiri schools. I know that some of the governors probably were not too happy, but then they didn't tell me they were not happy. <laughs> it was when I left office that I had that. But how would the governor not happy? Because we use the federal government money from the, the University of Basic Education, and it's just to partner with the state. The federal government has commenced enforcement of the decision by the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, directing that only persons with vaccination cards or evidence of a negative PCR test done within 72 hours can be allowed into public offices. The enforcement exercise began at the federal secretariat, where many civil servants were prevented from gaining access into their offices for failing to meet up with the requirement. And the federal government says Nigeria is on track to eradicate new HIV and AIDS infections by 2030, as over 1.6 million out of the estimated 1.8 million people living with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria are currently on treatment. The Director General of the Nigeria Agency for the Control of HIV and AIDS, Dr. Aliyu Gambo, stated this at the conference to mark the 2021 World AIDS Day. HIV can be controlled and the control can be sustained. And I want to say Nigeria is on the fast track lane to controlling HIV epidemic. Today, as I stand before you and I'm talking to you, we have 1.6 million on treatment just in two years. Welcome back. The Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act is in full effect in the federal capital territory since it was passed by the National Assembly. There's also a functional sex offenders register. This week, the National Agency Prohibiting Trafficking in Persons released the Violence Against Persons Annual Implementation Report for 2020. It shows, among other things, that people under the age of 18 experience sexual and gender-based violence the most. Women are the prime targets. And there's also a rising number of men dealing with sexual and gender-based violence. There's more awareness and urgency on the part of responders and stakeholders. And sexual assault referral centers are expanding all over the country, just like the one in our focus on the FCT. Please watch this. This is the first sexual assault referral center in the nation's capital. It's situated in Buari Area Council, and it will provide an opportunity for victims of sexual violence to make formal report to the authorities to take action. With the approach of establishing the sexual assault and referral centers, and basically what they are supposed to do is one, to provide confidential, private and client-focused services to victims without blaming them, but also believing their stories, which is quite key in terms of resolving the issues that affect each victim. We provide them with immediate medical treatment, we provide forensic examination that will be done by qualified doctors, nurses and medical personnel that will be used as evidence in court. The reason why that in the European Union, you've seen my ambassador and my colleagues are here, we consider sexual and gender-based uh, violence and also SAR, uh, sexual uh, assault referral centers, as a key and determinant tool in the fight against sexual and gender-based violence. It remains one of the priorities of the EU because we believe that it's a threat and there are challenges, these are challenges that affect so many people around us, so many women, so many young people that we know that you know, our colleagues, or friends, uh, know. We also know that SGBV has concrete consequences. It has concrete consequences in terms of 
the violence, in terms of, of development, in terms of social cohesion, and basically, ultimately, it prevents society and our communities from thriving. We have committed significant resources in the fight against SGBD in Nigeria, both technical and financial resources. But here I would also like to add that the EU is particularly proud of this support. So it goes beyond technical uh, and financial support, it's also about moral support. The enforced restrictions placed on movements in 2020 because of COVID-19 virus showed a spike in cases of sexual abuse across the country, including the Federal Capital Territory. According to the FCT Sexual and Gender-Based Violence Response Team, incidents of rape, sexual assault and spousal abuse spiked within the period. According to the National Sexual Offender Database, FCT recorded over 600 cases of sexual and gender-based violence. 105 cases were recorded between March and May, the main period of lockdown, meaning an average of 13 incidents per week, which is double the usual five to six incidents per week recorded in pre-COVID era. Recent reports and trends have shown that the rate of sexual violence, especially rape in Nigeria, is on the increase. According to a poll conducted by No Poli in July 2019, one in every three girls would have experienced at least one form of social abuse by the time they reach in five years. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Nigerian police reported that it received a total of 717 cases of social assault between January and May 2020. Many cases of social assault are underreported. Victims are often, oftentimes reluctant to report for fear of the social stigma associated with rape and survivor blaming. Even cases reported most times are poorly prosecuted due to lack of evidence to prove rape. More so, there are limited facilities to provide victims with necessary medical assistance. On a brighter note, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons has convicted some offenders under its new National Sexual Offenders Register. 38 sex offenders were convicted last year in the nation's capital. The figure is not encouraging compared to the number of cases reported within the period. This is the reason for the proposal to set up a special court to hear cases of sexual and gender-based violence. The Rule of Law Anti-Corruption Programme of the British Council is collaborating with the Federal Ministry of Justice, the Judiciary and other stakeholders to advocate for the setting up of these courts in view of the rising number of gender-based violence. This year's conference and indeed the other activities that are being supported by ROLA will be focusing on the campaign to amplify the call for fast-tracking the judicial process for SGBV cases by providing this platform and other platforms for stakeholders to identify and de deliberate on policy options, innovations, best practices, processes for the establishment and designation of special costs, as well as modalities for their operation. Justice and the end of impunity for gender-based violent offenders are at the very center of our action today. Inequality contributes to fear gender-based violence. If we do not stop impunity, we will not be able to stop sexual and gender-based violence. The federal government agrees with the proposal, and that lies within the jurisdiction of the judiciary. The representative of the Chief Justice explains how that is possible. Have the judges that have to be trained, their staff have to be trained. You have to have specialized everything across to make it ready to say we're going to go there. So it's a lot of work. And I'm glad that they're having conferences like this because sooner or later, all the people that matter must be able to speak with one voice. The mock tribunals are holding through the period of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence an international campaign to raise awareness and generate action to end violence against women and girls. The idea is to demonstrate how these special sexual and gender-based violence court cases would operate.
My guest on the program is Barrister Hassan Tahir. He's the Director of Legal and Protection at the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons. Why hasn't the Violence Against Persons Act been domesticated in all the states in Nigeria? Are there high-profile individuals who have been convicted of sexual and gender-based violence crimes? And when will these special courts be created? He answers these and a lot more in this conversation. Mr. Tahir, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Thank you. 3,600 cases in 2020 of sexual and gender-based violence. You know, you've been, you've been doing this for quite a while. When you hear these figures of people who are being battered and whose lives are being destroyed like this, how does that make the agency feel? How does that make you feel? Because you run the legal end of things, and most of those cases land at your desk. How, how does that feel sometimes? Well, uh, first of all, I must say that uh, these figures are frightening. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're having this kind of uh, figures and that uh, we are doing our best to ensure that uh, we reduce to the barest minimum cases of uh, SGBB, not only in Abuja, but throughout uh, Nigeria. Uh, I would like to point one thing here. The Violence Against Person Act came in to uh, block the loopholes found in penal courts and criminal courts. We'll get to the VAP Act and, yes. and the fact that a lot of states have not uh, domesticate them, domesticated yes. them. Yes. Yeah, we'll get to that shortly. I want to get your experience. Yes. Let's say this year, how many cases of sexual and gender-based violence have you had to look into this year? Well, this year from January to date, uh, we have hundreds of them. And that as soon as we receive cases of uh, SDDB, what we used to do is uh, to commence investigation. Has there been any, has, have you been able to prosecute this year and yeah, well, actually get convictions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For your information, we even got a life sentence conviction. Life it's sentence? Life sentence, yes. In Abuja? Yeah, in Abuja, here. Yeah. And uh, in, uh, in some cases... The person is in jail right he's now. He's in jail right now. And in some cases, the minimum the judge gives as per the, 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 the provision of the act is 12 years imprisonment. And we have gotten 12 years imprisonment for such uh, cases, 12 years, 14 years, even though some appeal against the judgment of the court, but we are going there to ensure that uh, the judgment of the lower court is affirmed. Another yes. reason why people are a little skeptical about reporting these cases when they happen is the legal process and how long it takes. And sometimes you get to these bottlenecks, you know, it, it frustrates a lot of people. Mm. And I get that. But there is something that has been happening this year with the 16 days of advocacy, Activism, yes. uh, where you've been trying to convince the government to create special courts. Of course, yes. You yeah. know, talk to us a bit about how these courts are going to run. We discovered that cases of uh, rape is very rampant. That is why we are advocating for a special court to try these cases. As you rightly pointed out at the beginning of this uh, program, about 3,000 plus cases of uh, rape or SDBB, or cases that borders on SDBB uh, were recorded. So because of that, we are trying to see and ensure that special courts meant purposely to advocate on this matter are created or are set aside so that uh, it will send a signal that number one, there is a special court, number two, that this court do not waste time in passing judgment, number three, uh, it, 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 is, it, it is a kind of, as I said, sending a message to those who are likely to engage or involved in this kind of uh, heinous crime. So, yes. And I've even seen the mock trials mock that, trial, yes. that have been going on. Yes. What's the hope that you will get it? Well, uh, is there is there a chance that you will well, get these special courts yes. this year, next year? What's, what, what's the hope for yes. it? Well, the hope is that we have to make a special case. Has that case has that case been made? Yes, we are making special case. Number one, we have to, as I said, uh, pay courtesy visit or courtesy call to the heads of the court who are responsible for appointing or are setting aside special court to try these uh, cases. Has there been a positive response from any of these people? Yes, we have been going there and we have been promised that special court will be 
uh, created. Even if special courts could not be created, at least special judges should be designated. You understand? Special judges that will be that, that are trained for SGBV, for SGBV case. will be designated to when? handle. Well, well, it's in the process. It's in the process. Will be will, will be trained. I mean, special judges that will be trained so that they can handle these uh, SGBV cases. It is in the pipeline. When <laughs> no, I'm, I'm telling everyone you. who has been a, a part of the process of trying to get judgments yes. or trying to get justice yes. in the case of sexual and gender based yes. violence, who's listening right now is shouting the same thing I'm shouting right now. When? Very soon. Very soon. I assure you that before next year ends, we'll get that either special court or special, or judges. special or judges assigned, special judges assigned to advocate on the SGBB case. So that will be the end of 2022? Yeah, that's our hope. And we hope to achieve that. Yes, and with the kind of advocacy we're embarking upon, I'm sure we will reach there. Talk to us a bit about the VAP Act. Let's, well, let's get there now. You, I mean, you've, you've taken your time to explain to us. Yeah, what yeah. yeah uh, My question said, has to do with this domestication. Domestication, you know. How many states have domesticated right now? How many states, how many states have not domesticated and why? You see, uh, we have 27 states that domesticated the VAP Act now. Okay. Currently. Uh, and also, we have six states that passed the act and the act is, is yet to be assented to by the government. I mean, by the, by, by the various uh, governors. We have states that domesticated the act. I, I don't have them offhead, but we have state, 27 states of the Federation have domesticated this act. Yeah, I'm talking about the ones that have not domesticated. The ones that have not domesticated, I, I cannot uh, say it openly now. How are we going to but, get but, them? But, but, but we, we, we have, have to we, be able to yes, name we, them we, so they can we, see, we have, we have so we can see where now. our problem is. We, we just launched a report on the BAB Act now, the implementation report. So those that domesticated the act and those that do not or fail or refuses to domesticate the act are there. It was from that report that we were able to know the number of states that domesticated the act, the number of states that passed the act but could not be assented to by the by the by the by the by their governors. What are so, some of the reasons that you're getting from some of these governors as to why they've not domesticated the VAP Act in their politics. states? Politics. What type of politics? For politics. You know, some uh, some are against the act. Why? For reason best it's known to It's a good them. act. It, it is a good act. As so I said earlier, wrong? it is a very good piece of legislation. That protects, it protects your people. It, our people, yes, of course. Our it people. Protects I'm talking our about people. the governor. It protects yeah, it, your people. Exactly. It provides maximum, maximum protection. Mm -hmm. Mark my word. So, what's it the maximum what maximum protection? What could possibly be wrong with this? Well, well uh, it could be because, as I said, because of politics. They don't want to. They, 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 they don't want to offend maybe a certain section of the populace. What section of the populace would be against the protection of people? Yes, um, it, it could be the 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 the, the, the are supporters. They are supporters. That's very strange to me. Yeah, it's strange. It sounds strange as well to me. It sounds strange. But politics is the bottom line. If not because of politics, we wouldn't have been here talking about the modification of the VAP Act. What sort of people yes. would be against the protection of both men and women? Because VAP covers yes, bo uh, yes, both sexes. Both yes. sexes. Yes. What section of people would have a problem if I may say, with people if being I may protected say the from violence? I don't understand if this. If I may say, it could be the perpetrators of the act. Certainly, they wouldn't the act the to be passed. Perpetrators would be so powerful, powerful enough that of the course, governor would have of, no choice of course. but to bow to their uh, whims and caprices. Uh, of course. People who are perpetrating of, of course, this kind of violence. Of course, it's possible. It's possible. I'm telling you. It's possible. Good congratulations on thank the you. 16 days of activism. Thank you. Good luck with the work that you do. And thank you so much for being with us on Daylight Abuja. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to my guest, Barrister Tahir, for speaking with us. Well, we decided to name the states that have not domesticated the Violence Against Persons Act. So you can all join us in asking their governors what the holdup is. Borno State. Cross River, Gombe, Kano, Katsina, Niger, Sokoto, Taraba, Yobe, and Zamfara. You can petition your lawmakers in those states. Petition the governors to expedite action on this piece of legislation that keeps us safe. 
That's our show this week. Please let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handles showing right now on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Megwa. See you next time.